So, beloved, we had our morning of reflection yesterday. We looked at the person, the journey of Peter, Peter the first Pope, what it meant for us in his journey, understanding our role as being the body of Christ, members of the church, the bride of Christ. And then we ended the morning's reflection with looking at the finances of the church. Those of you who are there will know where we are in terms of finances. Those of you who weren't there, God bless you. Feel free to call the office and find out if you want where we are in terms of our finances. But so far, we're doing pretty well. We thank God for his blessings. Beloved, as we journey through life, we can all use God's healing. Whether it be for ourselves or the people who we know. One thing is certain, we cannot survive on our own strength. And that is why as a people of faith, we must always turn to our God and ask for his ongoing healing in our lives. But how can we claim this healing? How can we understand what God's healing is all about? What do we have to do to embrace the almighty healing of God in our lives? I believe today's gospel gives us three clues as to how we can be open to the power and healing presence of our Father. The first is this. When someone is born deaf, that person obviously cannot hear. If I cannot hear, then I can't imitate what I hear. And if I can't imitate what I hear, then I won't be able to speak properly. So when the man was brought to Jesus, it may have been that he was born deaf because we are told he had an impediment in his speech. Children learn how to speak by listening, by hearing what mommy and daddy and everybody else is saying. And when they hear, they then form their own imitation of what they hear until eventually they get it right. That is why parents are often encouraged, don't stick to Goo Goo Gaga, who's a little cutie poo. Speak properly to them. In fact, mommies who are pregnant are often reminded, once the child is in your womb, start reading good books aloud. So that even from the womb, the hearing, which then leads to processing in the mind, hopefully will become that which is imitated later on through speech. When it comes to our spiritual lives then, beloved, and we find ourselves in a place of pain, of suffering, of darkness, of sickness, of near death, either for self or someone who we know and love, we have to ask for that grace in that moment in time. Lord, touch my ears. That is what the crowd begged Jesus to do when they brought the man to him. Lord, heal him. Lord, touch his ears. Why? Because if we don't ask for the Lord and give him permission to touch our ears, what will happen? We will end up listening to the voice in our head. A voice that is struggling with the pain and the suffering and the anger and the disillusionment that surfaces. And if we're not careful, not only do we choose to listen to that voice in the head, we also find ourselves going to people and listening to their voices. And depending on where they are in their spiritual journey, their voices may or may not necessarily lead us to what God wants us to do or how we are to live. What we all have to understand is that the Lord wants to touch our ears, but we have to allow him to do it. You've often seen me perform infant baptism. And part of the ritual is, may the Lord touch your ears to hear his word. Why? When we learn how to tune out the voice in the head or the voice of the people around us, we will hear God speaking. And what is God speaking? God is saying, be comforted. God is saying, be healed. God is saying, I am with you, be strong. 
When we turn in on ourselves or if we look for it elsewhere, we may find that we are moving away from God and blocking his voice. Every time the gospel is to be read, I often say to you, pay attention. Listen to a reading from the gospel. Because if we come to celebrate the presence of God, but choose not to listen to his word, how will we hear his comforting presence and words in our lives? We must start with learning how to listen to our God. Because the more we listen to our God, the more we hear him saying, be healed, I am with you. Which then leads us to the second point of healing. Since when we hear something, that's how we process and imitate in speech. God says, if you want to know my healing, you have to open your mouth and praise me. We hear how the man who was healed in the hearing then began to speak and give praise to God. When Jesus calls us, he calls us to speak his word, not our word or even not the word of another, to speak his word. Yesterday, as we looked on the life and journey of Peter, we hear Jesus telling Peter, Satan is going to test you, and you may not pass, but don't worry, I pray for you. So when you come back to me, I will make you strong enough to strengthen those around you. Peter, we know, betrayed the Lord. The closer we are to people, and when we choose not to listen to our God, or listen to self or others, and therefore go against what God wants, the greater the pain. But as I reminded you last week, where sin and pain and suffering abound, grace abounds even more. After Peter felt the touch, the healing touch of the risen Lord in his life, we are told in Acts chapter 3 that another person was brought to him for healing. This time it was a lame man. And Peter looked on the man and said the following, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give you. And he continued, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Imitating what Jesus had done to the paralytic who was placed on the bed and lowered through the roof. And Jesus said to that same person, your sins are forgiven, people didn't believe. And he said, to prove to you that I have power and healing, take up your mat and walk. What Jesus did for that paralytic, what Peter did for the lame man, we are also challenged to do. When we speak, beloved, do we tell people, get up and walk? Or do we tell them, stain your guilt and your shame and your mud. People who follow the Lord, like Peter, like all of us, must find the courage to speak words that heal. If we don't, we then forget that we're all in the same boat where Peter heard his first calling. I shared with them yesterday, those who play sports, team sports, understand the following. When your partner or someone on the team is not performing up the standard, if we give in to quarreling and cursing the person, Hi, what are you doing? And shout and scream at the person. Not only will that person's game go down, but you find the team also sings. But from personal experience, playing badminton, when I choose not to shout at my partner and say to him, Good try. You, you missed it? Good try. Come again. Let, let's do it again. We can, we can try. I find, we find, that the person not only improves his game, but the team's game also improves. In other words, beloved, when we choose to be that voice of healing, first spoken in our ears by a loving God, and then turn around and speak words of healing for others, the team, the community, the group, the country, the world gets lifted. And we are all called by God, walk, walk in my ways. When you fall down, get up and walk again, because I'm the God who heals. Which then leads us to the third and final point. We often image the God that we want based on where we are in life. In the first reading, we hear God comes with vengeance. Where did that come from? 
The Jews had entered a pact with the Assyrians and they thought this pact would make them stronger. But what happened was the Assyrians turned around and began to oppress them. And so they needed a fiery God who will come with vengeance to wipe away the Assyrians. When people are in a place of anger, that's the image of the God that they want. God come and wreck this group, this person, this nation. But look what happens right afterwards. When God then took the Assyrians out of the Jewish people's lives, they wanted a God who was going to be with them and provide for them. So we hear, I am the God who will bring streams into the wilderness. I am the God who will make the lame walk, the blind see, the mute speak. They wanted a God who was going to be with them. In today's gospel, we have the beautiful image of who they needed at that time. A God who heals. That's what's happening in our families, that's what's happening in our churches, our country, and our world. We need this image of a healing God. We need his power in our lives to keep carrying on. And so, beloved, if we are to embrace that healing, each time we come to prayer, ask ourselves, what's the state of my mind and my heart? Because that usually is the image that I project onto the God who is always present. Speaking of healing, I have been sharing with you that for the past year and a half, it has been pretty trying where my mom's health is concerned. Been a lot of back and forth with the doctors and tests and even with surgery. But the past two weeks, her health has declined dramatically. It's been rough, it's been a joy, it's been challenging, but after 20 years of ministry, beloved, I'm drained, I'm tired. I've been the only priest here at Stella Maris all these years. I was at St. Richard's for 11 years as the only priest. I love doing what I do, but right now, my parents both need me. I'm an only child, not spoiled. But they need my presence because of where they both are at. And recent experiences with mom these past two weeks have been pretty scary. So beloved, I have spoken to the Archbishop and I've asked him to give me some time off. I'm taking a sabbatical. It will not be a sabbatical of learning, of refreshment or ongoing growth. It's going to be a sabbatical of care. Mom and Dad need me at this time, and I need to be there with them as best as I can. So, beloved, I invite you to keep all sick in the parish in your prayers. Keep me and my parents in your prayers. The Lord is good. The Lord is faithful. God always provides the healing that he sees that we need. I've shared with you, sometimes he heals the mind and the heart. If he chooses, he may heal the body and the spirit. But no prayer for healing ever goes unanswered. To our God of life, love, joy, and healing, be glory and praise forever and ever.